We're continuing our series on the judge. We just got a, a couple more to uh, a deal with. Amen. Today we look at one by the name of Eli. And that's found in, in first Samuel, the first book of Samuel, uh, chapter two. First Samuel two. Uh it's, it's actually the whole chapter two, three, four, but we're just gonna concentrate on a few verses out of verse uh, uh, out of chapter two. All right, chapter two, thought we're gonna start twenty two. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his son did unto all Israel. And how they lay with the woman that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All right. He said to them, Why do you such thing? For I hear of your evil dealing by all the people. Nay, my son, for there is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of the Father, because the Lord would slay them. Verse 31, Behold, the day come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thine father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thy house. 32, Thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, and all the wealth which God shall give Israel, and there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. And the man of thine whom I shall uh, not cut off from mine altar shall be to consume thine eye, to grieve thine heart, and all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of thy age. And this shall be a sign unto thee, that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophni, and Phinehas, and, and Pinehas, and in one day they both shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house. He shall walk before mine anointed forever. Amen. That's the word of God for the people of God. Praise God. Amen. All right. Sinisha, God bless you. Brenda, God bless you. All right. Just for a, a, a little while, want to preach from this topic. The book of Eli. Michelle, God bless you. The book of Eli. Pop, 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 popular movie a few years back uh, featuring Denzel Washington as Eli. Amen. The book of Eli. Eli was one of the judges of Israel. Now, the name Eli. Chief Dishman, glad you can join us this morning. God bless you. Still praying for you. The name Eli means several things, including my God, ascent or go up, elevation, defender of mankind, and exalted. Eli in the Bible was a Jewish priest living in the days of the judges and, and serving God at the tabernacle in Shiloh. So he was both judge and priest. A, a city and near the hills country of Ephraim. Eli, Eli best remember for blessing of Sam, Samuel mother Hannah and for his part in Samuel first prophecy. And we'll get to Samuel later on. Eli family line would be supplanted by another, one that would be more faithful. God said, I will raise me up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. And I will firmly establish his priestly house and they shall minister before my anointed one always. Our responsibility as, as, as priests, pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists of God is to be faithful to God's will to be faithful to his word, and to be faithful to the ministry that God has given us. Now, early on, Eli may have been a good priest, but he was a poor, poor father. 
Just like Eli, we can be righteous men, but still fail as parents. I, I want to draw t your attention to a, 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 a grave mistake that Eli made as a father while raising his son to be men so that we should not repeat those mistakes as parents. All right. Just a few things about Eli. We're going to look at the training, training the children. Going to look at teaching them a, a, a godly principle. And going to look at lastly, he tolerated his son's uh, behavior. All right, training the children. All right, Eli ignored the spiritual growth of his son. He failed to give them spiritual guidance that they failed to heal it, heed it. Eli was the father of two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. They were supposed to be his successor as priest in the temple. Shockingly though, in, in Samuel, 1 Samuel 2, 12, the Bible say about his son that both were worthless men who did not know the Lord. How can this be? They're in the temple under their father serving as priest. Denise, God bless you. All right. And, but the Bible calls them, the people at that time called them worthless men. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, so many folks are worthless. Morning, Charles. How are you this morning? All right. Uh, 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 uh. And, and that's the part about it. Many folks grew up in the church, but still turn out to be worthless men and worthless women. All right. The, uh, 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 it's not saying, this is not saying that his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, that they lack factual knowledge. Many folks know about Jesus. They know things about him, but they don't know Jesus. They have not accepted him as their Lord and Savior. We're talking about the book of Eli this morning and how Eli uh, raised his children. And we don't want to take a page out of the book of Eli this morning. Eli was a spiritual mature man, but the, but the wicked lifestyle of his son indicated that Eli had neglected their spiritual growth. We talk about training up the child spiritually. He had neglected the spiritual growth of his children. All right. We must believe that that, that our, our children will inherit godliness. All right. Because they were born and grew up in God's house. Well, he was wrong. And just because they grew up in the church or you brought them to church don't mean that they're going to grow up to a worthwhile citizen. The Bible said that Eli's son were worthless men. All right. Uh, we can be like Eli sometimes. We are always intentional about physical growth. Try, we try to meet the emotional and maturity needs of our children. We try to educate our children because we know that children cannot hear, inherit these things. All right. But sometimes parents don't pay much attention to the spiritual growth, assuming that they would inherit it that because of their Christian heritage. Well, that don't work. We can't get to heaven on grandma or mama or grandpa's religion. We got to make it in on our own marriage. We got to work out our own soul salvation. So the uh, children inherit many such things from parents. All right, eye color, skin tone, temperament, but not spiritual growth. So we got to trust in God for ourselves and come to him and work out our own 
soul salvation. Then what can we do as parents? We cannot force our children to love the Lord. Uh, the Holy Spirit will take care of that. But we can sow seeds in their life, spiritual seeds in their life every day. Now, that, that's not an option, all right? It's an ancient commandment that's still valid in modern time, the time that we live in today. Recorded in Deuteronomy 4 through 9. And I'm going to read it because it's important. Hear, <coughs> hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. These words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thy heart. Seven, thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way or down the road, and when thou liest down, and when thou rise up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlet between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them on the post of thine house, and on thy gate. What that means is we should have the words of God, scriptures and saying posted around our house. All right. <clears throat> so it's important. It's not an option. We are commanded to provide spiritual guidance to our children. But here, Eli failed to train his boy. Now, God is faithful. When we do our part as earthly parents, our Heavenly Father will do the rest. Uh, uh, building up a child is easier than repairing a man. Building up a, 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 a girl is easier than repairing the woman. All right. The Bible guarantees our children will not abandon the ways of God after they reach manhood, if we take the time to train them in his way. Come here, a, a, a solemn witness for me, Proverb 22, 6. We all know it. Train up a child in a way that he should go, and when they are old, they should not provide or uh, uh, depart from it. So we got to continue to provide spiritual training and spiritual growth for our children. So we got to train our children. Well, what did that involve? First, we understand we got to train our children spiritually. Then we got to teach godly principle. Eli didn't teach godly principle to his son. Hophni and Phinehas did not know God. Hence, they had no respect for God or for his ways. So they were not afraid of, of robbing from God. All right. The, the writer Samuel described this in detail in, 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 in 1 Samuel 2nd chapter. Because out of the sacrifices uh, uh, that were offered at the tabernacle, a portion was allocated to God, the fat. Another was allocated to the priest, the breath and shoulder while the remaining portion was given back to the person that brought the sacrifice. Half nine finners, however, took whatever the fork, the, the hook, brought out of the pot even before the fat was burned. And there was a requirement to burn the fat. The fat is the finest portion of the meat and was offered to, only to God. Why did they steal raw meat? Who knows what's going on in the mind of the wicked? They didn't hesitate to use violence or force to get what they wanted. Their greed was beyond measure. Eventually, people stopped bringing their sacrifices to God's house for because they were harassed by Eli and his two sons. Not by Eli, but by his two sons, 
Hophni and Phinehas, talking about the book of Eli. All right. There, there, there are three great lessons here about teaching. The teach, try, and toil. The first is teach. We must teach God's ways to our children. Eli failed to impact on his son, uh, to impart his son and teach them to respect God's ways, including sacrifice and offering. Many, many folks in the olden days taught their children to respect God's ways and the man and woman of God. We'd be, folk would be sitting outside drinking and cussing, but when the man of God, the woman of God, they didn't have to be the pastor deacon, when the folk they recognized as men and women of God came by, they'd be quiet, straighten up and say, good morning, ma'am. All right. We're not teaching our children to respect God's will and God's way. Because they didn't know God, they had no respect for God. And when they didn't have any respect for God, they had no respect for anyone. So, Lesson one, we got to teach. Teach God's way. All right. Lesson two is the trial or the try. God will do it. The scripture says, if a man entreats against man, man shall God. All right. Uh, but the dispute between God and man, who shall judge? God is a judge. He's going to try us. All right. Both the heathen and his own people will be judged by God, and he's going to start at his house free. The scripture said, judgment start in the household of God. So we got to teach God's word, because God is going to try us. It's going to be a trial. He's going to judge us starting with his own house. Lastly, we got to talk. All right. That means to work and to serve others. All right. The priest was there to serve. His son, priest under him, was there to serve the people and not take from the people. Take from others and not indulge ourselves. We shouldn't use our, uh, our office, our privilege to take a disadvantage of others. Well, sometimes we use the acronym JOY, J-O-Y, to describe this, our relationship with Christ. Jesus first, J-O, other second, <coughs> Y, and our self last, or yourself last. So you want to have joy, you got to put Jesus first, other second, and your self last. And not fleece the flock, but minister and serve the flock. Destruction will fall upon everyone that take advantage of God's little children. My, my, my. Well, we looked at training the children. Train them up in the way they should go spiritually. And then we got to teach God the principle. All right. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? What's the difference between training and teaching? Well, you can train them to behave, but they still won't know God. Some folks are well-mannered and will give you the straights off of their back and will do anything for anybody, but they still don't know God as their Lord and Savior. So you got to teach them godly principles. Well, and finally, we can't allow them. We can't tolerate uh, bad behavior. And this is what Eli done. He tolerated his son immoral behavior. He turned a deaf ear and a blind eye to his son misbehavior. Eli's son was guilty of a whole lot of things. They were guilty of sexual immorality behavior also. They had sex relationship 
with the woman assembled at the doors of their tabernacle. Yeah, Eli didn't do anything about it except for a fever rebuke. Some may say that his son was beyond the age of physical correction. Well, he could have dismissed them as priests from the temple. But the scriptures say Eli had gotten old and he probably needed to turn it over to someone else, but he stayed in there and he didn't do anything about his children behavior. He tolerated his son immoral behavior. Well, we as parents, we tolerate our children misbehavior. Everybody putting the cart before the horse. You're having children and not even thinking about getting married, living together, shacking together, not married. And we as parents, we tolerating our children behavior. Will they going out and doing anything they big enough, bad enough to do? And we give just like Eli, give them a feeble rebuke. We can't tolerate wrongdoing from our children because God won't tolerate wrongdoing from us. Not for too long. We need to do more than a feeble rebuke. Yeah, because God will try you. And we can't tolerate our children' behavior. We cannot love our children too much that we hold back punishment. If we do, then we are their enemy. Proverbs 13 and 24, he that spared the rod hated his son, but he that loved him chastised him. So they're saying if you love your children, you got to chastise them. If you love your children, you got to correct them. You got to tell them when they're wrong. But so many parents trying to be friends instead of parent. So many parents trying to be part of animal with their children instead of being parent. When they wrong, we got to tell them and we got to chastise them and we can't spare the rock and we got to stop tolerating their immoral behavior. Eli brought destruction on the entire nation by neglecting his father's responsibility. We as parents bring destruction upon our community, upon our state, and upon our nation. Well, if we don't correct our children, then they start robbing, stealing, and killing my, 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 the time made them change, but the huge responsibility is still the same. Yeah, for fathers and mother, our responsibility still is the same. We got to raise our children to honor God and serve others. When we do let, when we do, let's remember we safeguard in the future, not only of the nation, but the entire world. My, my, my. And if you don't do that, my God finally will terminate you. He sent a prophet to tell Eli, I'm going to write the last chapter of the book of Eli. Your son have been running amok and you didn't, haven't done anything about it. Well, I'm here to tell you, my God decided to close the book on their bad behavior. Well, I'm here to tell you that both sons are going to die on the same day, and nobody ever 
and your household is going to get old. Cause you're gonna dishonor my your parent. You're gonna die young. Honor thy father and the mother that the days might be long. Well, Eli's son didn't honor him. Yeah, they didn't obey him. And they kept sinning in the house of the God. And God decided to terminate them. They went to war with the Philistine. And they both died in battle. The battle wasn't going too well. They sent for the Ark of the Covenant. And they died, and the Ark of the Covenant was captured. That symbolized the very presence of God. God had went out of their, never was in their life, and now he's out of the life of the nation. And a soldier went running back to Eli and told him that his son had died in battle, both them, both of them, and that the ark of the Lord had been captured. Eli was an old fat man. When he heard that his son had died, he fell back in his chair and he broke his neck and God closed the book of Eli. Well, I'm here to tell you, you don't want God to close the book of your life before your chapter is in. But we got to keep on doing the will of God. We got to keep on trusting in God. We got to train our children in spiritual manner. We got to teach them godly principle. And we can't tolerate <laughs> <clears throat> bad behavior. The God would terminate us. My, my, my. He'll send his judgment and hold back his mercy. He sent his mercy in the form of Jesus to save our soul. Jesus, the bright and morning star. The wheel in the middle of a wheel. Went to Calvary Cross early one Friday. They hung him high and stretched him wide. He hung his head, and for me, he died. He gave up the gold, took him down, put him in a grave. The grave couldn't hold him. Early, early the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. Caught the cloudy escalator, and he went on home. But one day, he's coming back for his church without spot and without wrinkle. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Praise